In this lesson, we are going to discuss the different variations of the graphs of y equals cosine x and sine x. Before we proceed, let us first discuss the amplitude of a wave. The amplitude of a wave is given by its maximum value minus minimum value divided by 2. Let us discuss the amplitude of y equals sine x. What is its amplitude? What is the maximum value in y equals sine x? Its maximum value is 1, right? Minus its minimum value is negative 1 divided by 2. So this is equal to 1. If we go back to the graph of y equals sine x, this is the graph of y equals sine x. Its amplitude is 1. Now, what will happen if you have the graph of y equals a sine x. It will turn out that it has an amplitude of the absolute value of a. Let us see why that is the case. Let us get the graph of y equals 2 sine x. And let us compare this with the graph of y equals sine x. Take note that y equals 2 sine x is just a graph transformation of y equals sine x. What happened in the graph of y equals 2 sine x? What happens is that the y coordinate, all y coordinates will be multiplied by 2, right? So let me just sketch the graph of y equals sine x. 0, and then it goes to 1, 0, negative 1, and then 0. This is one period. However, for y equals 2 sine x, all the y coordinates will just be multiplied by 2. So therefore, the y coordinate 1 will become 2. 0 times 2 will still be 0. This will still be 0. Negative 1, y coordinate will now be negative 2 and then 0. And the graph will be like this. So as you can see, all the y coordinates just got multiplied by 2. And look at this one. What is now the amplitude? Your amplitude of y equals 2 sine x is equal to 2. So take note, class, that the amplitude is not always the same as the maximum value. We will see that in our next examples. Now just to check our work, here is the graph of y equals sine x. This red graph over here and these are the points and let us see the graph of y equals 2 sine x this is one period so as you can see there is just a vertical stretching what i want you to remember here is the graph of y equals a sine x has an amplitude of the absolute value of a why do we have an absolute value sign because the amplitude always has to be positive so here's another example. Sketch the graph of y equals 3 sine x. Now this time around, I will no longer be sketching the graph of y equals sine x. I will now go directly to y equals 3 sine x. I always start with my five numbers on the x-axis. On the y-axis, instead of having 1, I will be putting three and negative three because I have three over here. So in this case, the amplitude is equal to three. Remember that y equals sine x starts at zero. So our graph will have the same shape as this one. So you start at zero, but this time you go to three, zero, negative three, and Zero. There you go. This is the graph of y equals 3 sine x. Let us check our work. I have here the red graph again, which is the graph of y equals sine x. And this is the graph of y equals 3 sine x. So if you look at our points here, there you go. Next, let us sketch the graph of y equals negative 2 cosine x. So you always have the five numbers on your x-axis, the quadrantal angles. And then for the cosine, 
it starts here at 1. This is one cycle of the graph of y equals cosine x. You start at 1 and then you go to 0 and then negative 1. 1, 0, negative 1. But this time around, you are multiplying cosine x by negative 2. So that's why these numbers on your y-axis gets multiplied by negative 2. So 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. This is 0 and then positive 2. So instead of starting at 1, you will now start at negative 2. So this is negative 2, 0, and then 2. 2, 0, 2, and then go back to 0, and then negative 2. This is the graph. So as you notice, you have a reflection along the x-axis because you have a negative number over here. And what is the amplitude of this graph? The amplitude is equal to absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. Let's check our work. Here is one cycle of the graph of y equals cosine x. And this is now the graph of y equals negative 2 cosine. Next, let us sketch the graph of y equals a sine bx. So now, we have a number multiplied to our x here. So before we proceed, let us consider the graph of y equals sine 2x. And let us consider the x coordinates when y is equal to the special numbers 0, 1, and negative 1. So that is, we are looking for the values for which sine 2x is equal to 0, sine 2x equals negative 1, and sine 2x is equal to 1. So for our guide, let us look at our unit circle here. When is sine of an angle equal to 0? Sine is the y-coordinate on your unit circle. So the y-coordinate will be 0 at this point. So those are 0, pi, and its coterminal angles. But for the moment, we will just consider 0 and pi. When is sine 2x equal to negative 1? That is, when is the y coordinate equal to negative 1? You occur at this point. And what is that angle? That angle is at 3 pi over 2. When is sine 2x equal to 1? When is the y coordinate equal to 1? At this point. Because this is the point 0, 1. The y coordinate is 1. And what is that angle? That angle is pi over 2. Notice these angles over here 0, pi, 3, pi over 2, and pi over 2. These are the numbers that we use when plotting the graphs of y equals sine x and y equals cosine x. However, to solve for x in this one, we will be dividing everything by 2. So when you divide this by 2, it's the same as multiplying 2 on the denominator. So that's why we have x is equal to 0, pi over 2. Here we have x equals 3 pi over 4. And here we have x equals pi over 4. And what will happen to our graph? Our special numbers in the x-axis would be 0, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, and actually pi. Where did pi come from? I should have 0 pi and 2 pi over here. So I should have pi here as well. So as you can see, sine 2x will be equal to 0 when x is equal to 0, pi over 2, and pi. It will be equal to negative 1 when x is 3 pi over 4. And it will be equal to 1 when x is equal to pi over 4. Notice here 
that our graph will no longer have a period of 2 pi. It has now a period of pi. So in general, any function of the form y equals a sine bx. Now what I want you to notice here is that if you have a number that is multiplied to x, its period will now become 2 pi over b. So here are the steps in graphing y equals a sine bx. So number one, you have to identify the amplitude and the period. Of course, our amplitude is the absolute value of a and the period is equal to 2 pi over b. Now, I just want to mention why do I have this condition that b is greater than 0? We can always set b to be greater than 0 by using odd and even functions. I will show that in our examples. And then second, determine the numbers on your x and y axis. If this is the case, you have, an, you have a b, what will happen on the numbers on your x-axis? Starting from the quadrantal angles, what will happen is that all these numbers here will be divided by b. So that's why 2 pi here will become 2 pi over b. And that is consistent with what we have over here. The period is now 2 pi over b. So you have 0 pi over 2b pi and 3 pi over 2b. For the numbers on your y-axis, your special numbers are 0, 1, and negative 1, correct? If you just have your a, all of these numbers will be multiplied by a. So that's why you have 0, a, and negative a. And then you can now sketch the graph. Let me illustrate that in this example. We want to sketch the graph of y equals 3 sine 4x. Number 1, let us get its amplitude and period. Take note that a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 4. b is already positive, so that's taken care of. Our amplitude is a, which is equal to 3. Our period is 2 pi over b, so that's... 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. Next, for the numbers on our x-axis, we have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. All of these numbers will be divided by b. So everything gets divided by 4. So that's why we have 0, pi over 8, pi over 4, 3 pi over 8, and pi over 2. And lastly, for the y-axis, we have 0, 1, negative 1. All of these numbers gets multiplied by our a. So this is 0, 3, and negative 3. We are now ready to sketch the graph. For the x-axis, we have 0, pi over 8, pi over 4, 3 pi over 8, and pi over 2. And for the y-axis, we have 0, 3, and negative 3. What is the shape of y equals sine x? Start at 0, there. So therefore, in our case, we also start at 0. So look at that, 0. So here we have 0, 1, 0, negative 1. So same as well. So we have 0, 3, 0, negative 3, 0. This is now the graph of y equals 3 sine 4x. Let us verify the transformations that happened in our graph. Again, I am starting here with the red graph, which is y equals sine x, one period. The first transformation is y equals sine 4x. So as you can see, the period is now equal to pi over 2. And then for y equals 3 sine 4x, the green graph will just be multiplied by 3. So that this is now the graph of y equals 3 sine 4x. So here are our points. We have pi over 8, 3, pi over 4, 0, and therefore we are correct. Here's another example. 
y equals negative 2 cosine of negative pi over 2x. Now, notice here that x is multiplied by negative pi over 2, which means that b is negative pi over 2. And we do not want that. So what we do is we use the fact that cosine is an even function. It absorbs the negative. What I mean is that cosine of negative theta is the same as cosine of theta. So we can write this as negative 2 cosine of pi over 2 x. And therefore, we have that a is negative 2 and b is equal to pi over 2. First, our amplitude is absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. Our period is 2 pi over b which is 2 pi over pi over 2. And this is 2 pi times 2 over pi. So we get 4. Next, the numbers on our x-axis. Everything gets divided by pi over 2. So here we already have 4. This is 0. This one would be 1, 2, and 3. So what you can do is instead of dividing everything by pi over 2, I already know that 2 pi will become 4. And then you just divide 0 up to 4 into 4 equal parts. So that's why you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Next, for the y-axis, this is the graph of one period of y equals cosine x. So it starts at 1. So I will write 1, 0, negative 1 and everything gets multiplied by a which is negative 2 so this is now negative 2 0 2 our numbers in the x-axis are 0 1 2 3 4 now your 1 will start at negative 2 so you now start at negative 2 0 2 0, negative 2. That is one period of y equals negative 2 cosine negative pi over 2x. Let us check our work again beginning from y equals cosine x. This is one period, the red graph. First transformation is cosine of pi over 2x, so that's y. The period is now equal to 4 instead of 2 pi. And then lastly, from this y equals cosine pi over 2x, we now multiply it by negative 2. So that's why we have this. So if you look at the points over here, that's the same as the graph that we obtained earlier. Next, what we want to consider is the graph of y equals sine x minus c. Now, let us recall that if the graph of a function f of x is known, then the graph of f of x minus c is the graph of f of x shifted c units horizontally. We discussed graph transformations in our previous video lecture, and we will use that to sketch the graph of something like this, y equals 2 sine x minus pi over 4. Now, just like what we did earlier, let us first identify a, b, and c. a is 2. And c is equal to pi over 4. So let us start with the amplitude again. Our amplitude is a, which is equal to 2. Period is still 2 pi because x does not have any coefficient. Well, its coefficient is 1. And this time around, we have a horizontal shift. And what is that horizontal shift? This is pi over 4. But what is it? Pi over 4 to the right. Remember that if this is minus, you shift it to the right. If this is plus, you shift it to the left. For our numbers on the x-axis, you have a horizontal shift of pi over 4 to the right. So what will we do? We add pi over 4 to all of these numbers. So this is pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. Once I already have this, the pattern is now just adding 2 pi over 4. So that's why I have 5 pi over 4. 
7 pi over 4, 9 pi over 4. For the numbers on the y-axis, sine starts at 0. So I have 0, 1, and negative 1. Everything gets multiplied by a, which is 2. So we have 0, 2, and negative 2. For the x-axis, notice that we now start at pi over 4. On the y-axis, we have 2, 0, and negative 2. Now, take note here that you started with 0, 0. This is the graph of y equals sine x. However, the point 0, 0 will now become the point pi over 4, 0. And then you have the point 3 pi over 4, 2. And then we just have the same shape. Just like this one. So the only important thing whenever you have horizontal shift is you look at your starting point. That's 0, 0. Always start at that point and then look the corresponding numbers here. That will be your guide. So that's why you start at pi over 4, 0. Let us again check our work starting from y equals sine x, one period, from 0 to 2 pi. This is the graph of y equals sine x minus pi over 4. So as you can see, it was just shifted pi over 4 units to the right. And then from this graph, we multiply all the y coordinates by 2. So that's why we have a vertical stretching. So as you can see, these are the points that we obtained earlier. Next, let us consider the graph of y equals negative 2 cosine x plus pi over 4. We have a to be equal to negative 2 and c is equal to pi over 4. Our amplitude is absolute value of a, so that's 2. Our period is still 2 pi because b is equal to 1. And our horizontal shift is pi over 4, but since this is plus, this goes to the left. For the x-axis, we have horizontal shift of pi over 4 to the left. That's why we subtract everything by pi over 4 because we want to go to the left. This becomes negative pi over 4, pi over 4. 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. For the y-axis, the shape of cosine x starts at 0, 1. So that's why I start here with 1, 0, negative 1. Our a is negative 2, so everything gets multiplied by negative 2. We have negative 2, 0, and for the x-axis, we have seven pi over four, and we have negative two, zero, and two. It's like what we did earlier. We have to consider our initial point. Cosine x starts at the point zero one. That's why you have here zero one. But this time around, the point 0, 1 will become the point negative pi over 4, negative 2. So we will start here, negative pi over 4, negative 2. And then work our way upwards. Negative 2, this is the next point, 0, and then 2, 0, negative 2. This is one cycle of this graph. Now let us try to put everything that we just learned. We now have A, B, and C all in one graph. What would be the steps that we need to do again? Identify our amplitude, which is the absolute value of A, period, which is 2 pi over B, and your horizontal shift which is C, either to the left or right. Now, if you have minus, this is to the right. And then, 
for the numbers on your x-axis, you first divide it by b, all right? Why is that? And not do the shifting first. The reason is because the transformation goes like this. You started from y equals sine x, and then you multiply by a, and then you have a sine bx, and then lastly, you have a sine b x minus c. So that's why dividing by b comes first. This is 0, pi over 2b, pi over b, 3 pi over 2b, and 2 pi over b. And then you now add c. And then lastly, for your y-axis, still the same, everything gets multiplied by a. So for example, let us sketch the graph of y equals 2 cosine x over 2 plus pi over 3. The first thing that you have to do here is to write it in this form. y equals a cosine b x minus e. This is very important so that you will be able to identify clearly what your a, b, and c are. So in order to do that, we have to remove the coefficient of x here. What do I mean by that? By that, I mean we pull out the coefficient of x here, which in this case is 1 half. And then for the pi over 3, since we pulled out 1 half here, we have to multiply it by the reciprocal of... 1 half so that when you distribute 1 half you still get 1 half times pi over 3 times 2 you still get pi over 3 hence our a is 2 our b is 1 half and our c is 2 pi over 3 for our first step we have your amplitude which is 2 your period is 2 pi over b so that's 2 pi over 1 half, which is equal to 4 pi. Your horizontal shift is 2 pi over 3 to the left, because this is plus. For the x-axis, we first divide everything by 1 half by our b. We get 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. And then, we have a horizontal shift of 2 pi over 3 to the left. So that means we subtract these numbers by 2 pi over 3 because we want to go to the left. For the y-axis, let us first get the basic shape of y equals cosine x. It starts here. So we have 1, 0, negative 1. This gets multiplied by a. We have 2, 0, negative 2. Let us now plot the numbers on our x-axis. and the numbers on our y-axis. Again, our point here, 0, 1, will now become negative 2 pi over 3, 2. So that's why we have this point. And then follow the shape. This is one period of this graph. Let us check our graph again, starting from the basic graph of y equals cosine x, one period. We have y equals cosine of x over 2. So as you can see here, the period is now equal to 4 pi. From the green graph, we now have a shifting of 2 pi over 3 to the left. From this point to this point, that is 
2 pi over 3 to the left. From this purple graph, we now multiply all the y coordinates by 2. And this is our final graph. So if you look at the points, these are precisely the points that we obtained earlier. What we want to do next is to include a vertical shift. Let us recall that if you add something here, that's, this means that all of this will just be adding the units to the y coordinate. So basically what we do is just the same as what we did earlier when we do not have any d. When we just have a sine b x minus e. Your amplitude, your period, your horizontal shift. And then for your x-axis, you divide by b first and then add c. For the y-axis, you still have 0, 1, negative 1 and then everything gets multiplied by a. But this time around, since you have a plus d, everything here gets added by d. So that's why you have d, a plus d, and negative a plus d. Let's see how this works in this example. Again, just like what we had in example 7, the first step is to write it first in this form. A cosine B, X minus C plus D. And this just means that we have to put this 4 here. x and then plus pi since you have 4 here you have to divide by 4 so that you get the same thing 4x plus pi minus 2 and therefore our a is negative 2 b is 4 c is pi over 4 and d is negative 2 so let us start by identifying our amplitude, period, horizontal shift, and vertical shift. Your amplitude is the absolute value of A, which is 2. Your period is 2 pi over B, which is equal to 2 pi over 4 or pi over 2. Your horizontal shift is pi over 4 to the left because this is plus. And you now have a vertical shift because you have a D. So this means you go two units down. For our x-axis, first we divide everything by B. So that's why we get 0, pi over 8, pi over 4, 3 pi over 8, and pi over 2. And then your C pi over 4 to the left, which means subtract everything by pi over 4. So that's why we have negative pi over 4, negative pi over 8, 0, pi over 8, and pi over 4. For the y-axis, cosine starts at 1, and everything gets multiplied by a, which is negative 2. So we get negative 2, 0, and 2. And then we have 2 units down so that means subtract everything by 2. Our numbers would now become negative 4, negative 2, and 0. We are now ready to sketch the graph. The numbers on the x-axis would be these numbers. And the numbers on the y-axis would be negative 4, negative 2, and 0. For cosine x, it starts at 0, 1. So that's why we have here 0, 1. And the point 0, 1 will now become negative pi over 4, negative 4. So this one, and then go up. And this is already the maximum value, go down. This is now one period of the graph of this function. On our next video lectures, we will be discussing the graphs of the other trigonometric functions.